Welcome to the fifth video of our APRV video series and in today's video we're going to cover weaning process how to wean off APRV mode of ventilation please remember to watch this video series again in order because every video built on the video before and remember to subscribe to our channel if you have not done so and let's start right away after this short intro Weaning patients of TCAV, time control adaptive ventilation, which is again a specific method of APRV, the weaning process really should not be started until the patient is having adequate oxygenation and with a low value of FiO2. Simply, if the FiO2 less than or equal 50% with oxygen saturation equal or above 95 percent when we reach this point we start thinking about weaning process and assessing patient readiness for a spontaneous breathing trial so at any point when we start thinking about weaning then we look at the how much p high of course assume we we kind of reach this point because we said do not touch p high if the fio2 is still above 40 percent or 50 50 percent you have to get the fio2 to that level before you start thinking about p high but simply let's say we arrive to this point that's when we start when we start thinking about lowering p high and usually lowering p high goes hand in hand by increasing t high so usually what we do we lower p high decrease p high by two to three centimeter h2o q two to four hours as long as the patient is stable right and we increase t high by one to two seconds q two to four hours our goal is really we're trying to reach this of course plus we're trying to get p high to equal or less than 18 and T high to around 9 to 10 seconds. So if we reach FI to equal or less than 50% or to sub of 95% P high equal or less than 18, T high 9 to 10 seconds, and the patient is awake, not tachypneic, hemodynamically stable, not on vasopressors, then we start thinking, oh, maybe the patient is ready for a spontaneous breathing trial okay so let me mention that again fio2 equal or less than 50 percent with o2 sat uh, this is one with o2 sat above 90 or uh, equal or above uh, 95 percent p high equal or less than 18 t high 9 to 10 seconds the patient also hemodynamically stable so make sure that he is not tachypneic not tachycardic not on vasopressors also adequately awake and of course if they are paralyzed you need to make sure they are of paralytics as well at that point when we have all of this we can start what we call sbt spontaneous breathing trial and don't delay really don't say oh the patient still requiring 19 seconds no i'm gonna delay and come down to you no just go if if these criteria are there just go to sbt trial like other modes so you can put them on cpap trial let's for example 10 over 5 um, and then 5 over 5 0 over 5 then cuff leak whatever you do just the traditional sbt that we use with others so the main pitfall people feel oh, scared or afraid it's 19 seconds no i cannot just switch him to sbt no try it and assess if they need of course do the cuff leak test assess if they need to be transitioned into a positive non-invasive positive pressure vintage do they need to be placed on bipap or cpap and the last thing i forgot is make sure they have a stable abg of course in terms of ventilation standard term of co2 mainly because we said they're auto saturation so it's not really difficult and remember when you use TCAP properly, usually these patients improve within 12, 12 to 24 hours and may be ready for weaning within one to two days. So it doesn't have to be that long. I want to also make you aware and, and just I want you to pay attention for some of the pitfall or mistakes people do with the APRV. The main pitfall with TCAP or APRV is that sometimes we say oh we have to try conventional mode of ventilation first no we can use it as an initial mode of ventilation 
especially if you anticipate the patient is profoundly hypoxemic, he's requiring non breather 100% of IO2, or he's been on CPAP or vapor therm like high flow nasal cannula requiring 100% of IO2. So go ahead, don't say, let me try volume control or pressure control first, and then if it doesn't work, I go. Don't delay, do not delay using APRV. The other one, don't rush this patient to a neuromuscular blockade. Don't paralyze them quickly, unless you need to. One of the advantages of APRV that allow the patients comfortably having spontaneous breath. Unless the patient start fighting the vents, then at that point we consider heavier sedation and neuromuscular blockade. Otherwise, just light sedation and let them breathe. That's okay, don't rush. You assume everybody with APRV need to be paralyzed. Also, don't be afraid of quick win because we think we put them on APRV, they're going to stay a week on this ventilator. No, the, the beauty of APRV in 12 to 24 hours, if we do it properly, it can improve recruitment significantly and improve sig oxygenation significantly. And if we reach the winning criteria we just talked about, go ahead and start, start winning them. Once you achieve that, start coming on T high as we explain, going up on T high. Uh, the things that we explain and if they are ready, stable, as we just said, go ahead and wean them and allow adequate time for weaning trial. So don't be afraid. Oh, they are on nine seconds uh, now. T high. If I switch them to uh, weaning protocol, they're going to collapse. No. Remember, APRV needs time. It's not going to fix or recruit the whole lungs or most lungs quickly it needs as i said 12 to 24 hours so it's very important to wait don't expect that immediate result within a minute or within 15 minutes an hour you will see a result of aprv so we need to wait on that and give it time as long as the oxygenation ventilation at an acceptable levels so these are the main Real pitfall again. Don't say, don't think it's only a rescue mode. That if the volume control or pressure control fail, then uh, I'll use APRV. No, you can use it right away. Do not again paralyze them without a good reason and do not delay weaning and wait. Give it time to work. Don't expect in 15 minutes things will improve. APRV is a recruitment maneuver, but a slow one. Next video, I will talk specifically about using APRV or TCAV method in COVID-19 and we will conclude with that.